Concerned Women for America has been hosting prayer vigils on college campuses across the country, which is a stark contrast to what we've been hearing coming out of college campuses about protests and other things relating to Israel. My name is Grace Riley, and today I am joined by Annabelle Rutledge, who is the Executive Vice President of Concerned Women for America, the nation's largest women's public policy organization. Annabelle is a very special guest because she graduated from Grove City, my school, so we have that as well as our involvement in Concerned Women for America in common. Annabelle, thank you so much for joining me. Please tell everyone what your organization has been doing. Uh, well, I'm so grateful to be here with you, Grace. It is special, the heritage that we share at um, our alma mater, Grove City College. So it's it's always fun to be able to do something with someone who shares that history with you. Um, as you said, you know, working for Concerned Women for America, we just have this unique opportunity. Um, the Lord has uniquely positioned us to weigh in on this issue. You know, we've been around for nearly 45 years. CWA has, we're a grassroots organization that has, um, you know, footprints in all 50 states from our state volunteers all the way down to our Young Women for America leaders. And about 13 years ago, we added support for Israel as our seventh and final core issue. And it has been amazing the opportunities we've had to celebrate amazing victories on behalf of Israel in this last decade plus. And we never knew, nor did we ever want to have to stand in the gap for them in the way that we've had to over the last couple of months. And yet at the same time, it has been one of our greatest honors and privileges and definitely of my career and even my lifetime to stand in the gap in this way. And so when all of this took place and Israel was ravaged on October 7th and, um, you know, of course, there's this horrible war happening in Israel. And then you look to the United States and we have a different war that is happening here. And it's an ideological war. And it's a war that's taking place at our college campuses. And so for us, our young women for America leaders, our high school and collegiate leaders, I've really been the tip of the spear on this. And so as we watched all this anti-Semitism ramp up around our country concerning this issue and because of this issue, we thought, well, surely our Young Women for America leaders can get in there and go join the pro-Israel efforts on their campuses, to which we learned that there were none. And that was deeply concerning to us and also a deeply motivating factor for us. And so we said, if no one else will stand, then we are committed to standing. That is why this is one of our issues. And so we reached out to some of our Young Women for America leaders, including at Grove City College, and said, are you guys willing to stand up and take these arrows alongside Jewish students in our country? And of course, everyone said yes. And that kind of started this journey of having prayer vigils on college campuses and in local communities across the country. And so as we close out 2023, we have done 10 different vigils and, you know, things will continue in the new year, but with holidays, um, it's kind of slowing down for now. But, you know, starting at Liberty University and, you know, down through Clemson and Baylor, Texas A&M, Georgia Tech, up to Grove City College and down to Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and all the way out to Southern California and many places in between, we have been able to gather with believers, Christian believers to pray but also having invited Jewish students to join us. And that's actually been one of the most impactful elements of what we've been able to do. It's so encouraging to hear that, that you and your organization is leading the charge in this way and that you're praying so fervently for something that's so important. Um, and I had the opportunity to attend one at Grove City and lead some prayers. And I'd love for you to share the story of Abigail. So Abigail is one of the hostages who was just released in Israel. She was held hostage in Gaza and actually turned four years old while she was in Gaza, and she was just brought home to her family. But Concerned Women for America really did a lot to help her family connect with Congress members. I'd love if you could share her story and what you've done to help her family here in the United States. Yeah, absolutely. So shortly after the attack happened, um, I had a friend reach out from Jerusalem and said, I've got these American families who have hostages, because as we well know at this point, it wasn't just Israelis or Jews that were taken into captivity. I think there were over 30 countries represented in the count of hostages, and there were at least 10 Americans among those, and one of those, Abigail. 
And so they said, you know, we've got these families. They want to meet. They're all women. They want to meet with con female congressional members. And I didn't know who else to contact. And we said, we'll do it. We're happy to do it. The answer is always going to be yes. And especially in the current climate. And so then she said, by the way, they're coming tomorrow. So we had 24 hours to pull that together. And thanks to my boss, Penny Nance, and also, you know, dedicated and firm and courageous leadership on the Hill, we were able to pull those meetings together. And we had a group of seven female senators who met with them the next day, led by Senator uh, Cindy Hyde-Smith. And then we had a bipartisan meeting of female House members also that afternoon, led by uh, Congresswoman Kathy McMorris Rogers out of the state of Washington. And this was just a moment, you know, there, there is a lot of um, behind the scenes camaraderie that does happen between members on the Hill and people don't always see that. However, for an outside organization like Concerned Women for America, you know, what we believe we, we lead with our faith and our constitutional values, biblical principles, so it's not often that we're calling a meeting where, you know, we might have some very far left progressive uh, feminists in the room where they're agreeing with us and we're agreeing with them. But it was one of those moments where humanity transcended the politics, the nature of the politics. And um, so we we were able to meet with a family member of this young girl, Abigail. And, um, you know, she has a tragic story of being um her father was shot while he was holding her and, and fell to the ground on top of her. And what she wouldn't have known at that time was that her mother had just been killed by terrorists inside. And that had been witnessed by her six-year-old and 10-year-old siblings. And um, they thought she was dead, but she was not. She got out. She ran over to a neighbor's house. She um, sought safety there. They put her in their safe room. The 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 dad went out to protect, protect their kibbutz, which was uh, kibbutz Faraza. And when he came back, all of them were gone, his wife, his three children, and Abigail. And, um, you know, this family member entrusted this story not only to the congressional members, but also to CWA and said, will you guys tell this story? Will you go and tell her story? And we were so touched and obviously so burdened by this little baby in Gaza. And we said, of course. And so, you know, we printed her picture out on a poster board and on flyers, and we took it to every single prayer vigil that we had. And we faithfully shared her story and prayed for her. And, you know, as a Christian, there are so many times that we engage in matters of faith in faith, if that makes sense. We don't know the outcome and we're not always promised to know that outcome. We just move in obedience. But this was one of those really beautiful moments where we moved in obedience and were able to see some of the fruit of those prayers. So as those hostage deals were brokered, I think all of our eyes were glued to the screen every single day and the news reports coming out, scanning for her name. And on the fourth that happened uh, Sunday after Thanksgiving, uh, she was released. And we were just so grateful to have been even the tiniest piece of that story and to have been able to take that story across the country and to engage so many people to grow the faith of so many college students even to engage and pray for her um, and then to be able to see the fruit of that and to know that she is alive and that she's home and just kind of celebrate that and then also turn to more prayer because the reality is that when she landed, you know, or was taken to Israel that day and came off of that transport bus, she would have learned that her mother was also passed away in addition to her father. And so, you know, she and her siblings have a lot of healing to do, but we are just grateful to have been a part of that story. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, again, just thank you for your role in that. And it's a, such a big praise that she's home and continued prayer is essential. When you were on college campuses, what were some of the reactions that you got? Because as I understand it, you went to some schools that were more Christian or conservative, but some of the schools you went to were secular universities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, honestly, there were varied responses as far as school administrations. And I will say that not every school we went to was easy to work with. Um, and 
we even had a Christian one, a, a school that claims to be a Christian school that was actually quite difficult to set this up. And we received a lot of pushback. And so I give so much kudos to our Young Women for America leaders who really take this on on their campuses. I mean, they're putting a huge target on their back on some of these larger um, campuses where this is an issue and where protests have happened to take a stand on this. And so it's it's just a really amazing thing that they've done, you know, across the board. Um, we were mostly met without protests. We did have protests at University of Alabama. Actually, a small contingency of students came out to yell. And of course, they did not want to engage in any fruitful, helpful, you know, way that would continue constructive dialogue, just kind of hurling accusations. Um, but thankfully, the group that was there that was praying was much larger. And I think one of the most beautiful things to come out of each of those vigils, um, I think we had six maybe seven of the vigils, we had Jewish students who showed up and we even had a school rabbi from the Chabad club on campus come out and join us at Texas A&M. And just hearing their personal stories, you know, if you're a Jewish person in America, you probably have someone you know who's living in Israel. And so most of these Jewish students, you know, are carrying their own burden of having friends or family members who are there and walking through that with them and also, you know, waiting with bated breath as they watch the news to see the outcome. And so just being there to listen to their stories, to offer them encouragement, to offer them hope and to let them know that they are not alone and that there are people on campus who are not anti-Semitic, who actually just view each individual person, no matter their background, their ethnicity, their religious affiliation, as unique creations of God who are worthy of human dignity and respect and that we believe that so deeply um, and our dedication to standing for Israel and the Jewish people, um, you know, is such a part of our DNA that we would be willing to put ourselves kind of in the line of fire, if you will. And that was encouraging to them. And all of that shared that. And I think it's just an important and really impactful way of building that bridge between um, Christians and um, the Jewish people and, and especially Jewish people of faith as well. And so that was a really powerful thing. But I think even bigger than that one, thankful to to you, Grace, and also the American Spectator in general for being willing to tell this story because it's not a popular narrative. And I really wish it had a larger audience because, you know, yesterday there was a hearing held. Congresswoman Elise Stefanik really leaned into the presidents at Harvard, MIT, and UPenn asking them a very simple question. Can you, uh, you know, condemn the calls for genocide against the Jews on your college campus as harassment or hate speech? And, you know, not none of these three women would give and classify that this would fall under harassment. You have literal calls for intifada, for murder. You have Jewish uh, or Israeli flags being burned on campus. You have Jewish students being chased and held up in libraries because the threat of violence. You've got swastikas on fraternity houses. And yet here you have these presidents of our elite institutes of education across the country willfully being part of this propaganda of, of death, quite frankly, and that is what it is. And so I think that yesterday specifically highlighted what YWA is doing, why it is so pivotal and so important. So well said. And, you know, that's a really great point about the hearing yesterday. It's unacceptable. And it's, it shocks me that it's so allowed and so, um, so tolerated now where it's, it's just common for everyone to take these stances and for um, people in Congress to take those stances and for the leaders of these universities uh, to be so blatantly saying things like that. Um, it, it's just really crazy, which is why the work that you're doing is so important um, and why it's so important as Concerned Women for America says to stand strongly and steadfastly in um, in truth and in doing the right thing. So thank you so much for joining me. This thank is an you. encouraging message, one of good news and a group of people who are doing really good things on college campuses across the country um, and just answering God's call to do the next right thing. So thank you for joining me. And um, I look forward to seeing all of the things that you continue to do in the future and being a part of them. Awesome. Well, thank you so much.